Hey, it's time for another episode of the Small Business Show. Yes, it is. How you is. doing, Dave? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today because it's one of the most frustrating things I think I've ever faced is uh, losing people or having things fall apart almost before they're ready to launch. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. The, the tension of the project gets to yeah. some people. And, yeah. and it, that tension can actually be really productive. And we talk about that it too. Can. Yeah, yeah, I like but, the way you uh, pitch that today uh, when we talk about that intentional tension. I think it could be really valuable for yeah, your team. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's. I'm looking forward to it. So you I ready? Too. You ready Thanks to roll, man? Here today. Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right. It's yes. It's beyond. It's it's. It doesn't matter. It's beyond. I don't care if you don't like it. It doesn't matter if you don't like it. Right. It's just Correct. like this it's is irrelevant. this is where we're going. So yes. Yeah. 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 And if you're not going to go with me, get out of the way so I can find somebody else that's going this way. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Despite the fact that I've known you for ten years and you've worked for me and we've got is yeah, if you're not the right person, that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I it's it's an emotionless decision. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business. Today is Wednesday, August 28th, or at least that's the day we're releasing episode 238 here. Sponsors for this episode include Linode at linode.com slash SBS, go.co slash SBS, and Mint Mobile dot com slash s b s we'll talk more about all of those uh, at some point during the episode here but uh for right now here in durham new hampshire back in durham new hampshire i think i woke up in new york today i don't know i don't even know anymore <laughs> i'm dave hamilton that i know i think that's good yeah yeah I think. and out on the west coast i'm shannon jean i do know that for sure as well there you go you might as well oh. say that you do even if you're not entirely yeah. sure that's right yeah sometimes i you know usually i am so. yeah but, yeah. I, but I question it sometimes, you know, you kind of have, we create this own reality. We talk about it a lot here on the show and sometimes go, okay, well now what am I going to be today? Right. That's or, right. That's right. But usually I know who I'm going to be. So, well, sometimes you don't know what you need and that's where our first sponsor Linode at linode.com slash SBS comes in because you might need to spin up a server tomorrow to do something. Maybe you need a new WordPress site to be hosted. Maybe you need uh, to host a VPN somewhere, right? Maybe you need something else that you would put on a server. That's what Linode is all about because they've got all their servers are SSD based and you can just go to linode.com slash SBS and spin one up right away. It's ready for you right away. And what's cool is you don't have to know anything about like the command line or anything like that. If you want to use the command line, of course, you're more than welcome. It's right there. But they also have their cloud manager that has this great interface where you can say, I want a WordPress site. And it will set up everything for you and just say, okay, here's your URL. Like, here you go. Their servers start at just five bucks a month. And we can give you a $20 credit because you're a listener. So you go to that URL, linode.com slash SBS, and then use code SBS2019. That gets you your $20 credit. Now you're spinning up a server tomorrow and out of the gate, it's not costing you anything. That's pretty cool. Go check it out. Linode.com slash SBS, promo code SBS2019. And our thanks to Linode for being a sponsor of this episode. It's good. Sponsors make us possible. Sponsors do make us possible. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So we have some interesting stuff we're going to talk about today. Uh, some uh, uh, some topics that you came back with uh, from some recent meetings and stuff. And uh, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, so, yeah, the one I think the, the one I want to start with is one that I call this is a, to a, a term that I have coined um, intentional tension. Right. And it, it did come up in a discussion, but it, it, it really, I, I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it okay. at many successful companies. Apple's a great example of a company that uses intentional tension. Right. But it, but they're not the only one and, and certainly aren't the, weren't the first and won't be the last, but by intentional tension, what I mean is a scenario where you are creating 
a not entirely fun work environment in order to produce the best result. And it, it's a short term pressure cooker, if you will. Right. Where, okay. you know, let's say you're you're you know, you're you're building something. Right. And, and you have you, you create a scenario where you have multiple priorities that are potentially at odds with each other, right? Like, let's, you know, like, I mean, the iPhone's a great example uh, because we all kind of know what they are. So we want this thing that's small but has a big screen. We want this thing that is uh, lightweight but has long battery life, right? You know, we, we, yeah. want it, we want it to be thin but also long battery life, like, right? And also, you know, we need to create this uh, within a certain budget and we need to create this on a certain timeline, right? And- all of those things are equal priorities, right? And and the, the trick is to not let, you know, if you've got individual people or groups of people representing each of those priorities in managing that, the trick is to make sure that no one gets to become the 800 pound gorilla that trumps everybody else. Right. I mean, the, okay, the, sure. the time, the timeline thing, you know, time marches forward. Right. So that, that eventually will become that 800 pound gorilla, but if you can avoid that for as long as possible, then what you get is people, you know, sort of jockeying for position saying, okay, well, mine is the most important thing to get, but I know that I have to appease all of these other factors. And you can do this to yourself. You don't need other people. You just need to manage the factors, right? Like I, I, you know, I, I need to, we are talking about servers. I, I'm migrating stuff to a new server, Right. And and I mean, we're working with with some of our admin team and all that on it, but it's like, OK, well, I want it to be fast and cheap and, uh, <laughs> you know, it, but it has to be able to do all the things that we need to do. And we need to get yeah, migrated to it, it all. And, yeah, yeah, we need to get migrated to it quickly, but we need to do it carefully and we need to do it a certain way. And like it, all of these things, it migrating this stuff is not a fun process. But I will tell you when we're at the end of it, we all feel really good about it. And that's sort of the trick of this intentional tension. This, you know, I, I say it's a short term period. When it when this is over, I will create an intentional tension about something else, right? But but yeah. it, but it's you know it's short lived, and then we get to the end, and it's like, oh, hey, we made it out of the pressure cooker. That's pretty cool. Like, look what we did. This is better than what we would have done if we just said we should come to work every day and feel like comfortable and relaxed. And you know that that's nice some of the time, but not all of the time. And I, I think that's sort of the point is you you shouldn't necessarily be just coasting along all the time. You've got to challenge yourself. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Is, would you say that so my, my question, uh, that intentional tension, what if you had two different groups or two different people sure. or managers, however you want to say it, and they both had uh, the same goal, but were coming at it from different uh, with different solutions. Sure. Would that be a similar type of thing? It's like, okay, we're going to build this thing and it has to be light, super thin, but we need the best battery life possible. Team A, team B, go. And you have the same budget and the same time frame, and you got to present your findings uh, and whoever wins, you know, everybody gets a bonus and this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, would you say that's a similar kind of thing? Absolutely. I, and I, you okay. know, I mean, I've been covering Apple for decades, so I, yeah. I have those examples in my head. But, um, you know, that's how the I, the original iPod came to be. Sure. They they had several teams working. And I, I don't think that's a, a isolated case at Apple. I think that's more the norm. They had several teams working on various different paradigms of what an you know mp3 player would look like and uh obviously the team that came up with the click wheel was the one that won but um uh, but not all the you know that was the only one that had the click wheel the rest had like some buttons or a display you know there were just different paradigms and it was like wait yep. nope this is the winner okay yep yep interesting and because uh, there's like a there's a very old management uh paradigm philosophy or whatever. And I, I can remember uh, my mom was a, a pretty, uh, I guess, high powered executive, you'd call her. And they part of their management training and how to handle their kind of mid-level managers was to always keep them uncomfortable. Yes. And, and to always have, because complacency, you know, breeds mediocrity, right? Absolutely. It, it, yeah. So I, I think it's a, a, a similar theme, um, you know, and it, and it, even though you may think it kind of sucks to 
uh, be kept on uncomfortable or whatever, it, it really probably does produce, I'm sure it does produce better work, better right? results. Yeah. Better results. Yeah. And, and then maybe in between those times you get a little, Oh, Hey, you were, now we can celebrate how good you did. You get a bonus or whatever. Right. Uh, but then now here's the next challenge that we're going to introduce that you have to solve. Um, uh, I, I like it. I think yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's really a good, uh, a good method to, uh, to embrace. I think it's it cool. is. And, and, you know, you can, you can look at your own organization and figure out what the, the competing priorities are, but that, you know, that's what you're looking is to identify, you know, the competing priorities and where possible, make them as equal as possible. Right. So that yeah. you are able to actually create this tension, because if there's one priority that, that truly does trump all others, well, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't make this as easy to do. Right. <laughs> Um, right. I, of course, if you're, if, yeah, you, I think as a, as managers or business owners, we also have to be careful not to have a preconceived idea, uh, in your head or to be aware that as humans, we often have preconceived ideas and how something should work Yeah, and to be open to whoever or whatever team or whatever department really does come up with a better solution that meets you know the needs of whatever it is the product the business you know that kind of thing yeah for sure right yeah you need yeah. exactly yeah you need because exactly. I, I would say I've, I've definitely had that pro problem you know before where uh, you know you want everybody's involvement but you've already made the decision and and that's not a good way <laughs> not a good way to do it well uh, i mean sometimes be, that does happen right where yeah. that's what you do and then you, you know and then people are just implementing uh, yeah. and, and and perhaps being being and perhaps even in that right like you know I'll I'll rewind to the iPod like there was a decision made we are going to make an MP3 player okay oh, yeah great sure. like okay so we're we're not just designing uh you know out of whole cloth we have a goal in mind so how do we but, get there but it, so yeah. I guess even if you do have that you know it's where you have the preconceived notion of exactly how it's all going to happen um. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if, if it is a good path, take it, but know that you're not creating this scenario that this is, you know, yeah. this is not that. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And I think the key is, uh, because this, this type of scenario is going to happen over and over and over is to come up with the system or the framework that your people can work within. So they're familiar with it. So once you reach this, you know, uh, end product or whatever it is, achievement that you're going to, uh, you know, yeah, uh, that you're working on when you're ready to roll in the next one, it's like, okay, I know how we do this. We then lay these things out. Here's the, you know, the markers, here's what we want to achieve, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Exactly. Uh, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, I, I really, I a good idea. yeah. And I am at times guilty of trying to make everyone too happy. Uh, oh, I totally have that. I was yeah. thinking the, that exact thing when we started talking about this. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm not as good as this as uh, at this as I should be. Right. Um, because I have this vision in my head of creating this awesome place to work. And I want to come every day and we're bringing our dogs and we barbecue and we play ping pong. And, you know, it's tough when you introduce uh, that kind of tension and not to, uh, I mean, you don't. You don't want to, I'm worried about perceived, you know, how the, it's going to be perceived or how maybe more, more accurate, how I'm going to be perceived. Yes. Laying these things out. So you, you really have to become, and, and I, I would argue that the most successful people, if you look around, they're not worried about this. They're, no. they're just like, Hey, this, I don't care what you think of me. This is going to happen. And you guys need to figure out a way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I know that's joke, the key. Yeah. 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 I always joke with my kids. We talk about people, you know, super successful, you know, whether billionaires or whatever, Bezos or, you know, these guys, Gates or jobs. I'm always like, those guys are not friendly guys. <laughs> you know, those, you know, maybe at home they are maybe, maybe, but uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, yeah. they are, you know, uh, they are by definition, you know, uh, introducing this intentional tension and, achieving unbelievable things with it. That's correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, and that and, that's 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 right. I I've always said that those guys ha exhibit some properties of sociopathy, right? Where it's just yeah. like I yeah. I well, 
that's all that's all fine but we're going over here now and and i need you to like create the path to get there and and i don't care that you don't like it you know like that kind yeah. of thing it's I, not, and it's and it not even matter a, if it if it's not possible you're you're going we're going to do it right, right? yes it's yes yeah. it's beyond it's it's it doesn't matter it's beyond i don't care if you don't like it it doesn't matter if you don't like it right it's just Correct. like this Irrelevant. is this is where we're going so yes. Yeah. 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 And if you're not going to go with me, get out of the way so I can find somebody else that's going this way. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Despite the fact that I've known you for 10 years and you've worked for me and we've got, yeah, if you're not the right person, that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's an emotionless decision right. or if there's emotion, it's, it's wrapped up in the end result. Um, not in, the you know keeping people happy along the way there might be emotion though wrapped up in knowing how great people are going to feel about themselves when you get to the end as long as they get to the end and i, I think that's sort of the next topic that we're going to talk about here but um but yeah, yeah before before we jump into that i want to remember uh, i don't know if i've mentioned this before in the show but there's, there's a a powerpoint uh presentation that's floating around uh it's uh, from Netflix, uh, all about how they handle uh, people within your organization. And when you when you said, you know, oh, if you're not the right person, that kind of reminded me of it in the sense that they don't think of their everyone as a family. They're all like professional uh, sports uh stars are on a team, right? Okay. They run their, their company like a professional sports team. And so when they need a new person, uh, and I'll give you an example. At one point, they needed somebody that was the absolute best at logistics because they were shipping DVDs all over the country, right? Makes sense. So they found the best, like, let's say running back, if you want to. Yeah, whatever. right. If you want to take a football analogy. Yeah, right. But, yeah. Analogy. Sure. Okay. We need this guy or a first baseman. Who's the best? Great. So after some years, the person that was in charge of this uh, and the business shifted to become more like a Hollywood studio, they simply went to this person and said, okay, you're no longer the star we need. Thank you. Here's the door. Here's some severance. And now we're right. going to go find the next person. And they, they introduced this concept like the, the day you're hired. And there's a great podcast that, uh, about the, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll post a link in the show notes of the woman who wrote this policy with Reed Hastings. And she actually became, uh, it happened to her. It happened to her certain, too. Yeah, of course. Of course After a certain did. number of years, yeah. he, you know, Reed walked in and said, no, you know, it's time. I th <laughs> everything's great. I mean, it's, it talk about keeping people on edge, you know, because you had to prove almost daily that you were the best and earn your spot on the team, just like a professional, I guess a sports player would be. Yeah. Cause if there's a backup waiting to take over your spot, the day you stop being the absolute best. Yeah. That's and uh, really interesting. Talk wow. about tension. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, uh, it but is, I can it, see why it works. I mean, it's, it, you know, if, if you follow sports at all, whatever sport, like it works there, like that is the formula. Yeah. No one expects that, oh, I'm, I'm guaranteed to be on this team. You might have a five-year contract with that team, but they could trade that contract out real fast. You know, <laughs> like yeah. happens all the time. Yep. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. It's uh, similar. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So, okay, man. What 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 else? What else are we going into here? I I want to I want to take this and kind of move to the 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 next topic, which is this idea of you know people uh, quitting when the going gets good, like bef before you get to the end result. But first, uh, yes, I want to talk about our two next sponsors. Uh, and our next sponsor is Mint Mobile. If you listened to last week's episode with Mint Mobile CMO, right? CMO, Aaron North, I think. Yep, CMO. That's CMO, right. You'll know that Mint Mobile is, they are obsessed with making the customer experience work really well and really inexpensively. And talk about tension, right? Like, that's a tough thing to do, but they figured it out because they took a look at what they were all paying, AKA what we're all paying and looked at what it took to get to that number. And it was like inflated prices because of expensive retail stores that these carriers are paying for, uh, hidden fees, 
all this other stuff because they know you'll pay that you didn't have any other choice, right? You need your wireless service. Well, that's where Mint Mobile found some places to improve because they provide the same premium network coverage that you're used to at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. And as Aaron North said last week, they sell it all to you in bulk. They save on retail locations and overhead and they pass all those savings directly onto you. And that's why Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. And with Mint Mobile, as I said, you buy your data in bulk. You buy plans that have 3, 8, or 12 gigs of 4G LTE data per month. And you can buy them in different packages so that you put it all together and boom, now you've got the service that you want. You can stop paying for all that unlimited data that you're not actually using. It's great. Use your own phone. Shannon and I have been using it. The service is fantastic for each of us. Like quite surprisingly for me, better yeah, than what I was using with, a, with one of the big carriers before. Like it, I was really, truly blown away. And I've, you know, I've been traveling all summer, haven't had any issues with it. In fact, it's been fantastic. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, and get it shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash SBS. That's mintmobile.com slash SBS. Cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is go.co. You know that one of the most pivotal decisions you make when launching a new business is your name and your URL. Sometimes the URL you want or even anything close to it is just not available when you're searching for those dot coms. Well, you can do what Shannon and I did here at businessshow.co. Yes, you can go get your own dot co domain at go.co slash SBS. There's more availability. There's a better chance of getting exactly what you want. It's short. It's only two characters and you've been remembering it. So you already know it's easy to remember. There's more than 2 million domains registered across the world, so it's it's an accepted thing. We're all used to it. Businessshow.co proves that, right? But so does Google with G.co and Campus.co and lots of others as well, Bird.co, right? So get yourself online today with your .co domain while it's still available. And at go.co slash SBS, you can register your .co domain for just five bucks. I've done this. Trust me, it works. It works. Plus, get three months of website builder and hosting services for free. Go.co slash SBS today for our special offer. That's where you go. Don't wait. That's go.co slash SBS. Our thanks to go.co for doing what they do and for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Now it's time. Let's talk about when the quitting, when the, when the going gets good and the quitting gets, <laughs> gets popular, right? It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. So, it's so bizarre, but it's, it's worth talking about it. Cause I need to be educated on how this happens and, and why we think it happens. Yeah. Um, I see this all the time where you get, you know, this pressure situation, right. That we talked about right. earlier where you're doing something new and different. And that's a little bit scary. Right. So you get fear involved and we know yeah. fear based decisions bad. Right. But also like, you know, it's not it's fear of not just failure, but fear of success, too. Like because sure. that's an unknown. Right. That's if you're creating something that you've never done before. Well, then success is change. And we're all afraid of change because we're human beings. It's just we're built in naturally, you know, we have this natural aversion to change. I see that I saw this most recently, uh, not in a, you know, typical business environment, but in a theater environment I was doing last summer, I was doing a, a performance or, or a run of Tommy, the who's Tommy. Right. Okay. Sure. And we had our first rehearsal on, I want to say it was Saturday when the show was going to open on Thursday. Now the cast, the, you know, the actors, uh, had been rehearsing for a while. They knew most everything. And as the band, we come into the first rehearsal familiar with the material, but it's going to be, we call it a stumble through, right? Because there's going to be things that are like, Oh, right. That doesn't work. Okay. Let's fix this. That sort of thing. Right. So we do our stumble through on Saturday and it's a mess. 
as it always is. Should be, right? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Right. But everybody's a pro. Everybody's going to, like, you know, you just have to trust. It's Because sometimes it's really hard to believe, but you just trust it anyway. Like, the process will get us there. By Thursday, this thing's going to, the show's going to open. Like, you know, talk about intentional tension, right? Time is part of it. So time is one of the factors. It's the most important. Quality is one of the factors. It's the most important. Sound is one of the factors, right? It's the most important, right? Like, you, I mean, it's really exactly what we were talking about. And so we do this and we run through this. And it's kind of a mess and nobody's perfect by any stretch. I mean, you're never going to get a perfect performance, even though you, you might strive for that, right? Even even sure, if you do the run sense. for a long time, like, you know, you get, you might get one performance where you walk away and you're like, oh, that was the one that, that was pretty good, you know? But, um, so we finished this rehearsal and I think we had the next day that Sunday was off and then we were back there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then obviously opening the show on Thursday. Fine. No problem. The guitar player, as he was, you know, as we were all getting ready to leave, he's like, yeah, I want to bring my amp home so that I can, you know, work uh -oh. on some sounds. I was like, uh -oh. it, yeah, in, in, I mean, I, I'm highlighting this now because in retrospect, it was obvious what was happening. It, it seemed yeah. weird, but it, it certainly didn't, to me, telegraph that we were never going to see this guy again so long as we shall live. But in wow. fact, <clears throat> we have never seen him again. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was, you know, it I mean, I, I think some of the people know him, it, like he wasn't an unknown character in all of this, but, but okay, he yeah. never came back to the show. Like there was no talking him back into it. And it was exactly this. He saw the pressure and he was like, dude, I'm not going to be ready. It's like, well, we all believe that right now, but we all yeah. just sort of put that thought out of our minds. And that's Correct. what you have yeah. to do is you just have to say, yeah, I, I'm scared to death here because if I play the way that I just played, forget about what everybody else did and forget about trying to lock in with everybody else. If I do what I did on Saturday on opening night, we're going to have a major problem, right? And that's true of every single person there. And so it feels like a disaster because in a sense it was, but you have to start somewhere, it's, you know, and you don't yeah, start sure. from perfection. If you could start from perfection, there would be no reason to have what they call tech week, right? You know, where yeah. you're getting together every night to, to do these things. Like if you could build the perfect product or, you know, if I could, to use my example before, if I could just, you know, magically snap my fingers and everything was migrated to the new server, well, then there's no reason to put in the time. <laughs> it's yeah, all right there. That, yeah. And that, uh, that perfection, that seeking of that uh, will destroy i mean it, it just ruins your chances of success and your chances of being able to launch whether it's a product whether you're in a performance like that i mean you just can't think like that you uh, can't you, expect in, in, to be an expert on the no. thing you are doing new for the first time the first correct. time that's yeah just and and there's and you don't need to be Oh, it's right? ridiculous. It, right. yeah. yeah. No one, I, I would argue that, especially in like performance things, the, all the little things that you are so freaked out about, that's, th those help you get better. But most people that are there watching the show are not picking up on your specific no. performance. They're yeah. there for the whole thing. And they don't see most of this because my, my daughter's in the you know, theater right. as well. Yep. She would say, oh, did you see that part? And I was like, what, that we messed up here. I'm like, no, I, I was yeah. awesome. I had no idea. And, you know, so we're all, uh, you know, there's, there's, even other performers on stage with you don't notice. Like I, yeah. I, I did a run of, of this show called Hedwig and the Angry Inch this weekend, which is a blast to do. And the guy who played Hedwig, we got off stage, I think Friday night and we were in the dressing room, like taking our makeup and stuff off. And he's, he was really down and beating himself up. And he's like, God, that was a disaster. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, Oh, I messed this up and this up. And I just, you know, couldn't get into the flow of things. I'm like, dude, I was literally on stage with you the entire time. I'm listening intently to every word you're saying, because those are my cues to yeah. start the next song. Yeah, I mean, like right, I'm right. really into this and I've done it now, you know, 10 times with you. So if there are changes in the way you do things, I will notice, you know, like long before anybody in the crowd would notice, I'm going to notice. I'm like, if you asked me, I would have said you had one of your best nights tonight. It's yeah. So, and I think yeah. It, it comes back to that. We're all very, uh, uh, 
focused on our on ourselves, right? It's yes. just the human condition, it's the way we it. look, how we do, what we do. But because everyone else is also focused on their themselves, they're they're gonna miss all that stuff. I and mean, you can count you know, on that. That's right. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. They're not yeah. paying attention to the way you look, the way you sound. Not as much, you know. Not as much. Uh, yeah, they're doing their own thing. And I, 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 it's it's a fascinating concept. Um, I've recently had some experience with it as well, and I, 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 my thoughts are, it's not uncommon that the last ten percent of anything you do is really where things can go wrong. Right. Yes. Whether it's, you know, in your case, you're getting ready to launch, do the show or you're launching a new business, completing a new project, a new product launch, whatever it is. But I, I'm amazed. And this has happened to me a number of times where you get right to the edge where things look so close and somebody bails out. Yeah, and I had uh, with, with Tech Restore. We had a, a, a you know, a number of years ago. Great partner with a an on-site company and uh, this guy that you know ran every, uh, service on site which we didn't offer and said look sure. let's use our marketing power and our you know uh, installed base and we'll start offering this on-site stuff all over the country we I mean I spent almost a year putting all this stuff together built websites created you know all kinds of digital assets and this whole thing and literally right I would say we were 30 days within launch and this, uh, this guy, nice enough guy, you know, uh, came and just said, I, I just can't, I don't have it in me. I just can't do it. And, and that's so classic because, it's because just, it's that fear of success. I really I, believe it. it the is, last 10% agree. is hard. Don't get me wrong. Like it is hard, it but, is hard. Yeah. but I don't think it's the fear of we can't do it. I think it's the no, fear of we can. I agree with you, but I think there is that fear of failures in there too. Where, well, they're the same okay, thing. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. If, yeah. if, if the same, the, the, the other side of the same coin, right. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we launch and everybody knows now I'm trying this, then I've got a whole other part of my, you know, psyche, you know, out there uh, that could get damaged. And, I mean, it, it makes me speechless. And this is not the only time it's happened to me uh, where, you know, and unfortunately in this case, this guy was kind of the key person where I didn't have the bandwidth to take this project and, and, and I couldn't really plug anyone else in. So we really had to pull the plug. You know, we talk yeah. about uh, the fallacy of sunk cost, you know, it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, there goes, we're, we're done with this, you know, there goes 50 grand, you know, down the tube, but we learned a lot. Um, and I would say that there's a few things I've been reading up on this once we've talked about this and a few things that you can do to help avoid uh, this happening with your team, especially if it's a new partner, or a new employee is have that discussion about how the last 10% is going to be really tough. Have oh, that discussion at the really beginning, smart. at the beginning, when you start talk, you're going to go, okay, here's what we're creating and here's our timeline and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Be aware that these last, you know, 10 items on the list or whatever are going to be really difficult and it's going to be different at that point from this. So, and, and just keep talking about it. Um, oh, that's really smart. And I would, I would say, you know, there, there's a, the, the, um, the easy, I'll call it the easy sandwich, right? Because yeah, okay. the, the, the start when you're like, okay, now whole cloth, like you've got to figure out build a plan, uh, you know, how do we get started, right? That's a really hard thing to do. Then you're sort of moving along on this plan for a little while. So you've got this hard part at the beginning, then you're moving along on the plan. Not that it that's easy, but it's easy. At least you sort of know what to do next, you know, because you've built this plan at the okay. beginning. And then sure. the end is really hard because you got to actually like, you know, do the finished carpentry and make it look good and, and all of th that stuff that you know, the, the meat, it needs to look good when it gets to the end. And so, you know, you call it the, the, the easy sandwiched amongst the difficult, right? Cause yeah. you, it's going to be hard at the beginning and as hard as the beginning was expect the, the end to be even harder because now you care, right? Like yeah, at the beginning, and, uh, you're like, ah, whatever. Like it's all yeah, pie in the sky. Along. Yep. And now at the end, yeah. you've got 90% of the work done. You don't want to mess it up. Yeah. I also, and I, I would say that it's sim that, 
your description is like what happens with a lot of contractors, like building contractors totally. that you hire. A lot of them just disappear halfway through or three quarters of the way through. And you're like, wait, 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 what happened? Because then the it's where the rubber meets the road, right? You have to finish the cabinets. You have to do get the, the floors done, whatever it is. Uh, it has to be inspected. And the, the molding, have, right. Yeah, you've got to get yeah. all that stuff done. And that's not yeah. easy. No. Yeah and, yeah. and the other thing I was thinking of as you were talking is that I think there's another reason that's not just fear of failure or fear of success. It's also um, like, I really like change. What I'm not afraid of change. I'm actually, I, I love it. It is what drives me all the time. What I'm afraid of is the, the daily grind. I shouldn't say afraid, but I don't like it. I don't like the part where you have to do it over and over and over again yes. once you've created it. Right. Oh, that's uh, true. At the end, then you just have yeah. to now live with this thing. That's now right. You've got to manage it. And that's yeah. not as fun for me. So I get at the, towards the end of a project, especially the longer it takes to get it to the end. Um, you know, I, I, I'm loving the creative part, the, you know, building this, creating a logo, picking colors, building a website, creating an app. I love that part. That's, that's, gets my juices flowing and it challenges me and it uses a lot of my skills. Right? right. So I feel very, I feel very valued, but then at the end you're like, okay, now the product is done. I really need to keep, get away from it. Right. And hand it to someone else. And fortunately I've been able to do that for in many instances, but I find it harder when I can't hand it to someone else because right. now it's like, okay, I have to go out there and, the daily grind. How many did we sell? How many people did we sign up? I mean, all these kinds of things. Um, so I, I got myself into podcasting, you know, I, my no, plan I was to that. start the, the, the podcast that we have at Mac observer, which is called yeah. now called Mac geek Cab. The first episode was called TMO, the Mac observer it was called TMO to go. Um, and then we changed it uh, for the second episode. And then by about the fourth episode, third or fourth episode, Apple featured us and our listener numbers went through the roof and we started getting all this like listener feedback in. And it was like, crap, I can't hand this off. Like I'm the host. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. 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 It's, so, it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so, I enjoy the heck out of it, obviously. It's oh, all yeah, fine and course. good. Yeah, but it was absolutely. not part of the plan <laughs> to, yeah. to grind it out every important. week for 14 right. years. I think yeah. if you find yourself, you know, procrastinating getting the projects completed or getting the product launch and trying to make it perfect or whatever it is you, you if you may be one of those people that like well i love the creative part but i don't like this part so you got to try to identify what it is yeah and i i think there's um there's a great company called 37 signals uh 37signals.com you can find them and they make some phenomenal uh, software, uh, web-based software to help manage your business, Basecamp and uh, Campfire, a couple of other guys. And they and they, they wrote a book called Rework, which I've yeah. mentioned a num yeah. number of times on the show. But they also wrote a book called Get Real. And it is the process that they use to create these uh, programs, these applications that run on the web. And they wrote this book because they are, they experience a lot of what we're talking about here on the show. It's free. You can download it. I'll put a link there in okay, the, in the cool. notes. And, and it really is like a master class in managing projects and more important thing, getting things done and completed quickly. You know, they are uh, really focused on limiting features if you, if you will, right. Sure. Uh, on, we're not going to add a bunch of stuff. And once we say, this is it, this is it. We're not adding this kind of thing. They, they talk a lot about breaking bigger projects down into smaller parts so that you're actually completing a hundred percent of a lot of little things instead of 90% of one giant thing that can be kind of foreboding. So you, you then put these pieces of the puzzle. Okay. Done, 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 done. And then at the, you know, towards the end, you're like, Hey, we're done. You know, you got all these things done. I got all these things done. Um, and they also talk about limiting the timeline to just like, Hey guys, we're going to build this thing in, in, you know, if you, if you can build it in a, in a week, why take a month? If you can create this thing, um, you know, uh, they basically embrace constraints you know, giving yourself too much time is not going to help you get things done. Uh, and, and they reference this thing I mentioned uh, to you early, Dave, Parkinson's law, where the work you're, you're doing will expand itself to fill up the time that is available for its completion. Oh, absolutely. 
Yes. Right? And, yes. and I, I, I have the same problem. It's like, okay, I, you know, I can get this done. Ah, you put it off a little bit, whatever you kind of tweak it, whatever. So giving yourself those constraints and, and breaking things up into smaller chunks, I think is great. And, and that book get real, even though it's kind of, and, and they even say it in the introduction, it, it's really built for people creating software, but there's some tremendously valued business lessons in there for all of us. And I would highly recommend you take a look at it. I think it's called getting real. If I'm looking at the link, right. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure people, when they see the show notes, it's all there in the show notes folks, but yeah. yeah, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's some great stuff and they, they make some great software too. We had to have one of those guys on the show. Oh, that would be a great Um, idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, being aware that this problem is typically, you know, is very common and it, could you know, rear its head as you're working on projects or trying to achieve things. I think that's the biggest thing that the biggest takeaway from today's show is when you're starting something new, understand that that last big push is going to be problematic. And I, you know, I've had this problem happen and I've had this discussion, but I don't think I've had it early enough in the process. So for my next, you know, my next life. My next trick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For my next trick. I'm, it's going to be like, I'm going to put it in the working agreement, you know? So right when we start to talk about building something or doing something together with, with a group or a person, we're going to have that discussion and say, okay, I want to recognize that the last 10% or 20%, whatever it is, that is the hardest part. And we're going to have to really be aware of all these things. And here's what we'll do to mitigate it. I think it's good to have that discussion on the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. It's funny. Y- you know, I mean, we, w- the working document is a, is a great sort of catch all for, for these types of things, but the things that you, we each learn, you know, as we move through our business lives about like partnerships and those sorts of things, you and I are both partner people. Like we, you know, we, right. we tend to gravitate towards scenarios where we can find, okay, you can do that part that I'm not good at, or I don't like to do, which generally turns out to be the same thing. Uh, you know, I'll do the parts that you don't like, or you're not good at and, and like perfect, like match made in heaven. Right. And, and the things that are in our respective default working agreements, you know, those boilerplate, they tell a story, don't they? They do. <laughs> yes, yep. they do. Yep. <laughs> As you keep adding things. To yes, them. exactly. It's like, oh, I see you've been here before. Okay, check the like box. It. Yep. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, and so I think talking about contracts, uh, you, you know, it, I think it's time for another, uh, uh, episode of our business therapy section in the podcast. Is that right? Uh, it is. I feel like we almost need like, a uh, some theme music some, for this. That's yeah. like, you know, kind of like, like mellow and chill. I'm going to work on that. Okay. I'm going to work on that. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so, as listeners know, we're changing up some of the format on the show, kind of some new things. So we appreciate your patience while we do that. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I have this thing and I've run into it a few times now. Uh, where, you know, we bring on publishers here at Backbeat Media. We, we manage the sponsorships and some other things, but, but generally the bulk of our business is managing the sponsorships for publishers, uh, both podcasters as well as website owners. Okay, okay. sure. And in order to do that, right, like let's say I'm approaching you, you know, Joe Podcaster. Okay. And we're having a conversation. It's like, great. Uh, you know, how do things work? Oh, well, let me tell you how things work here. We, here's how we do it. You know, and I would ask you the same questions. How does your show, you know, how often do you publish? What, you know, how many listeners do you have? Like we, you know, we go through this process, this little dance of just getting to know each other because that's what you have to do. And then we mutually decide, okay, is this a thing we want to do together? And we don't, you know, it, it, in our company, we don't want every podcaster like and, and every publisher. We, we sort of cultivate a list that, that works really well for the types of clients that we have, right? Okay. Which is smart. You know, Makes sense. I think yeah. it's smart. I mean, other people are yeah. doing quite well with, you know, thousands of shows. We are doing well with dozens of shows. So, you know, it's yeah. all fine. And then it's like, okay, how does it work? Like, what are the logistics of us working together? We both admit that we want to. So now let's talk about the the details. And the details would be things like, you know, we, we do a revenue sh- uh, share with our podcasters where, you know, the, the, the ad brings in X number of dollars. We keep a percentage of that for bringing the ad in and managing the process. Right. And you get the rest because you're the podcaster with the audience that's still delivering the ad. Right. So we go through all of that. And actually, I make sure we talk about all of that kind of stuff in the first conversation. 
I do not like to hide that kind of thing. I, you know, I like to be upfront. We're upfront yeah, about it. Because if, if that's a problem, then, yeah, then it's a done deal. That, yeah. Hey, we can't. Then yeah, we can't yeah, work why together. We, why? Yeah, yeah. Why waste any more time? I yeah. talk about in, in the same vein. I talk about salaries um, or you know pay, whatever it's going to be, if it's hourly or whatever. But I talk about pay on the first job interview with somebody because it, for the same reason. Like, why are we? Why would we waste each other's time if I don't have enough money to yeah. pay you what you think sure. you're worth? And you may well be worth that. Don't, you know, don't take it the wrong way, but I can't pay you that. So, okay, off you go, you know, or, or you know, or yes. Oh, that fits. Okay, great. Let's, let's keep talking. So we talk about all of that and then it's, okay, how do you get paid? How does, how do we manage things? How does the, what does the process look like? You know, when an ad comes in, you know, how does that work? We go to the show, we vet, um, we call it the vetting process where, you know, sponsor A will say, I'm interested, or we find out that, you know, we're starting to work with sponsor A. So we'll go to our shows first and sort of pre-vet things. Like if sponsor A is interested, would you take their ad so that we can present to them with confidence that when, you know, sponsor A says, yes, I want shows, you, you know, one, five, seven, and nine. Okay, great. Then, you know, we go back and we can book those we could, because we already know that the show is going to approve having that ad and that sponsor. And that yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. When we always tell people you got veto power all the way through, right? Like even if you tell us yes, and then later you decide, no, that's fine. You have veto power. Do that too often. And obviously, you know, if there's a pattern there, we, we might have to have a conversation because we've been spinning our wheels, but we, right. you know, we understand it's your show. Okay. All of that stuff. Now. These are all great points to talk about and we talk about them, but it's all, I think it's really good to have these written down because we need to know how it's all going to work. And we need something to point back to, to say, no, no, like, okay. You know, if they say, well, how come I haven't gotten paid yet? Or how come yeah. uh, you put this sponsor on my show and you know, or how come the schedule's working this way? It's like, okay, well, you know what? Let's look back at the document that that documented the conversation yep. that we had in the beginning. Something that because we need to know that we can, you know, all work together. And then you look at the document, you're like, ah, OK, this is how it says it's going to go. Are we following that? And if we're not, who's at fault and how can we remedy that so that we're all happy working together? Nobody has any problems with any of this. OK, right up until the point that I send them a PDF that actually details it all. And it says the word agreement at the top. And then, and I've run into this several times in the last year, few times over the course of the last 20 years, but far more so in the last year, we've been bringing on more shows. So, you know, the free, the increased frequency of it is, is to be expected at some level, but I've had people tell me several people that I don't think know each other and certainly I don't think have coordinated their messaging. Uh, tell me, Oh yeah, you know, I don't, we don't believe in contracts. Huh. And it's like, well, and I've tried to like, I, I, I called one of them at one point. I'm like, okay, okay. Help me through this because I know you want to know how things work. I want to know right. how things work. Like what's the, what's the holdup here? Well, I think that, uh, is there, I mean, a lot of times when people use the word contract, they, they feel like, okay, this is some binding thing where, you know, your use of the word agreement really just is, is just that we are agreeing. That's what it to says. It says agreement on it, not contract. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that's where you have to go, look, we don't want a contract that's going to bind you to us and we don't want to be bound to you, but we need to have a, an agreement that just states we're going to do this and you're going to do that. And That's when it. we both do these things, this is going to happen. That's it. That's it. And yeah. that's what the agreement says. I mean, it's really <laughs> short. It's really yeah. so, like that. It, it, and I've asked people like, okay, what part of the agreement is the problem? Like, what have I put in there? That's not what you just described, right? Like, where is the problem here? And no one can point to anything other than, it abstractly and and really yeah. it's the signature line is sort of the problem yeah, of course right like well, that's that's it's the commitment a, yeah you have to make some kind of commitment that yeah and and i and maybe you have to have that wording in there it's like look all this agreement simply states what each party is going to do there is yeah. no time frame if you want to drop out at whatever i right. mean this kind of thing and and maybe maybe uh you know do you send it to him like as a PDF? I do. And I'm wondering if I should 
like create an online form yes. instead. That was going to be my next thing yeah. is that you, yeah, I think it's friendlier yeah. if they can here, click this link. And when you've read it at the bottom and you agree that this is how our, and I think the words are important when, you know, when you agree that this is how our relationship is going to work, click agree. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, think that's that would the make key. it friendlier. Yes. Yeah. Cause, yeah. and then, cause then you have an answer. It's like, well, we don't have a contract. We have an agreement that just says, I agree to do this. You agree to do that. Yep. And, and if you, and if they're not going to agree to that, that's probably not the customer for you. No, it's not. But you know, I'll have them like every one of them has said, well, why, why don't we just like do some deals together and see how it goes? Like, that's no what problem. we're going to do. Like, yeah, that's, that's the it. plan. But, that's but the you idea. need that. We need to agree that we're going to do this. And maybe in the, that you, maybe in the first, you have to have kind of first uh, one or two sentences in that agreement that really states that it yeah. makes them feel comfortable. Yeah. That like, this is not a binding contract or some sort of effect that, that alleviates their fear. It's like, this is just an, a, a, simple, a simple agreement that these are the services we're going to perform and these are the services you're going to And this to is provide. how, it, this is how, it, yep. these are the rules of the game. That we, this is that how you're going to get paid. Upon. Yeah. This is how we're going to split the profits, that kind of thing. So yep. it's just a framework for how our relationship is going to work. Oh, relationship framework. Uh -huh. I like that. That might yeah. be it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because then, you know, they're just, oh, I don't want this big contract because then if I change my mind, whatever, well, it's fine if they change their mind, as long as they, you haven't paid them for something they haven't done yet or, right. uh, you know, it's like, hey. Yeah, it's all non-exclusive. I mean, we have some right. people that we've chosen after time to go right. exclusive with, but that's like, we used to get people, like it used to be the norm in this business for the relationship to be fully exclusive, you know, all the way through. That's not the case anymore, but because it's non-exclusive with some folks, we need to have an understanding, an agreement yes. about how we're going to communicate so that we're not both pitching the same show to the same sponsor, potential sponsor, because then everyone loses, right? Makes then we sense. look like we're not coordinated. So, okay. And every, and when I have that conversation with people, they're like, oh yeah, of course that makes sense. We don't want to waste time. Like, right, cool. So here's how that works. And here's what we've agreed to. And it's like, oh yeah, no, no, gosh. And it's just, it's fascinating to me. And some yeah. of these, some of these are, you know, solopreneurs, right? That, and, and some of them are, are young and some of them are very established businesses. Like it's huh. just bizarre to me. Yeah. Well, I, I understand that if it's an established business, cause I've done lots of businesses with some really large companies that absolutely will not enter into any sort of agreement with you other than a discussion about oh yeah we're going to do this you're going to get this from us and we're going to yep. do that yep. but they're like we can't become bound to you at all because it's just too, too yeah. with too much liability yeah so i i get that how, yep. how that might work yep. but uh yep. but yeah i think if you if you change how you're framing the 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 uh the wording uh the some of the terminology that you you could you could get the same thing but they'll be more comfortable yeah I, yeah, I like it. I like it. It just, yeah. it needs to be packaged differently, I think is, yeah. is clearly yep. the issue. Yeah. And I like doing it on the web. I think it's a little more approachable. It is. And they're, they're used to it. Yep. Uh, you know, what, what do you think folks? Uh, feedback at businessshow.co. If you have a similar situation that you've solved or have any advice for Dave, here's your chance to uh, help us out. Yeah. I would love to hear about it, whatever, yeah. even if you haven't solved it, if you're, if you're listening to the show and, and sort of pounding on the dashboard saying, no, 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 do it this yeah, way. Don't do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's what we want to hear about. So yeah, for sure. Thanks man. Yeah. This was good yeah, business therapy. Yeah. It's, um, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. always easier to solve somebody else's problems. Yeah, it, that's true. But it, but it, <laughs> yeah. you know, in doing, I love, that's what I love about the business therapy here is it allows us to sort of, you know, objectively look at these problems, right? Which right. is good. So, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, maybe some of our listeners need some business therapy. So you can send your questions as well to feedback at businessshow.co. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is please leave us a review. Go to businessshow.co slash reviews and it'll take you right to where you can leave us a review. It really helps. And we really appreciate those reviews coming in. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes a big, big difference. So, 
That's us for today. Thanks, folks. Have a uh, have a great week. Make sure you keep living that charmed life. Thanks to our sponsors, linode.com slash SBS, mintmobile.com slash SBS, go.co slash SBS. See you next time.